Hello, this is Terrell Pauley, and welcome to part two of the HL7 tutorial for beginners. Let's pick up where we actually left off. This is part two. If you haven't actually, um, you know, watch part one first and then come back here to part two, we're just going to pick back up where we left off. So part two here. So now let's go. Let's talk about the uh, so we left off that the trigger events. Now, and the trigger event actually defines the type of message and the message structure. So, for instance, where we talked about the earlier in the first episode, in the first video, uh, AO4, which is a registered patient. So, we're going to take a look at the message structure for uh, ADT AO4, registering patient. So, the, the, uh, so what makes up a message is you have segments and if we take a look at the uh, the bottom half of our of our uh, screen here we have our same message that we had in, in the beginning of the uh, first video so what makes up a message are segments so each we have these these different segments and each segment starts with a segment ID so you have a MSH uh, you have a e, uh, e, uh, EVN, a PID, PID, and a PV1. So, if we look at the message structure, the part, this partial message, message structure of ADT AO4, you'll see you have these different segments. You have uh, MSH, which is which is the message header. Uh, EVN, you have the event type. You have the patient identification. Uh, PD1, which is for additional demographics. You can kind of you can kind of actually get an idea of what these the the what these different segments the types of information that these different segments hold so for instance the msh which is the message header is it actually contains the the just the information about the which we can see in the bottom half the sending application um sent by the receiving application the time that it was sent the actual the actual uh, message type is in there um so send the sender application sent by the receiving application received by the date and time the actual um the message type is in there this is actually for a message id and then some more information that we have here. So you can kind of tell. So for instance, if we come down to the next one, the event segment, event type, this this also lets you know what um, what the type of the uh, which which um, trigger event this is. So trigger event. The date and time that it was sent, and I believe I believe this is the actual person who uh, the the operator the the person who actually entered the information. We can actually verify that. But so when you're actually looking at different types of uh, message types or trigger events, you can actually look at the 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 message structure for that for that for that trigger event or that message type and all of these are actually defined you know in the hl7 specification document um a couple of things that i'd like to point out here is that you'll notice that these uh so the so the straight brackets means that that segment is optional and the curly brackets means that that segment can be repeatable so it can be um within the message more than one more than one time and that's that's what that means so in 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 summary a message is made up of segments okay and different types of segments now the at the abstract message structure of any message can be found in the in the hl7 specification document so for instance, if you want to look at the um, the abstract message structure for AD, uh, ADT 
A04 and then in your H07 spec, you'll come back to our H07 spec document for version 2.3.1. And we'll come here to A04, register a patient. Register a patient. And this right here, it gives you the complete, it gives you the complete abstract message structure for for a um for ADT A04. And what I mean by abstract message structure, as I, I like to mention real quick, is that typically, well, how it works is that in H07, when you, when you're actually um, when you're building interfaces, the you you need at least two two things. You'll need the HL this HL seven specification document, and then that's going to be the starter. Then for each um, each uh, interface is can be built. It's going to be built based on the HL seven um, um, this HL seven spec document. So uh, an interface specialist who's building interfaces will take the spec and they'll um as as the as the like the foundation and they'll be able to take and pick and choose what they want to use as far as well we you know based on they can't pick and choose you know stuff that's that's mandatory like the the MSH the EVN the PID and the PV1 those are mandatory so you have to have those segments but everything else the the when you're building interfaces you can decide and choose what you're actually going to use um and uh and so based based on that a interface specialist will actually build an interface specification that will be used to that dictates what a message looks like coming out of their a application so the HL7 spec document is the foundation and then you have a interface spec document that's actually used that will um, that actually determines what message what messages looks like coming out of a that particular application. So, so in summary, when you're actually building um, interfaces, so you have application A, application B, right, and they want to be able to integrate. Uh, be, being able to send and receive H or seven messages, they'll they'll actually have to be able to uh um they they have to have to actually use and um their the interface spec document they have to what what has been built from application A and so 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 they can actually know exactly how messages are be, being able to come across. I hope that makes sense. So again. I have not actually myself built any interfaces before. This is all just based from the book that I read and, you know, and everything just makes sense just based on my experience from working within the field. So, and this is pretty much um, an example overview of a, of a, the message structure. So, each each type of trigger event will have will have its own uh, message structure that um, that you can look at. So let's see. I'm trying to see if here if I want to. And actually, I think I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna pause here, just based on. So we just went over the message structure, and uh, I'm gonna stop here. I'm going to pick back up on video number three. So I hope that this has been helpful so far. And again, if you would like to, um, you can actually get a copy of this entire um, training tutorial in PDF format. You can actually go to hl7tutorial.com. It'll be listed there for three or $5. You can pick that up you know, or you can actually go and actually, um, pick up the book which what this training is based on um which is going to be in the link in the in the description below and again that is an affiliate link 
which means that I will earn a commission uh, at no extra charge for you. So hope this was helpful. My name is Terrell Pauly. See you in the next video.